हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अंजना चट्टोपाध्याय एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन द मॉड्यूल गवर्नेंस इन पब्लिक लाइब्रेरीज इन इंडिया अंडर द पेपर नेम पब्लिक लाइब्रेरी सो वॉट आर द लाइब्रेरी गवर्नेंस इंक्लूड्स गवर्निंग बॉडी विच इज एम्पावर्ड बाई रूल्स लॉज एंड एक्ट्स टू मेक पॉलिसी फॉर गवर्निंग अफेयर्स ऑफ लाइब्रेरी टू अचीव द टारगेट to deliver better library services the library governing body holds the responsibility in building a strong institution it must ensure that the organization operates legally and with sound financial practice the library governance is expected to maintain good governing of the library affairs and keep organization free from corruption and maintain transparency the members of the governing body looks after the job of framing policy for smooth running of the library it demands for the allocation of financial resources and their proper utilization the governing body acts as the watchdog for achieving the aims and objectives of the library what are the objectives of the governing body the governing body aims to achieve better library services through transparent and fair library governance it is a policy making body it does not interfere in day to day administration in fact it acts between library authorities and the librarian to resolve many tough issues related to library problems through discussion and justification it enforces directives for library rules library standards quality of library services and advocates for financial resources manpower space and infrastructure for the library the library governance justifies the financial expenditure and it also ratifies the annual expenditures incurred in the annual report when the report is placed before the governing body it makes librarian accountable for the success and failure of its service the library governance is empowered by rules statute and act to make strategic planning regulate financial legal issues and advocate for staff retention and recruitment it acts as a watchdog for the overall performance and reputation of the library as an organization the different nomenclature of the governing body in a library are depends upon the type of libraries we are going to have there are three types of libraries which include academic libraries special libraries and public libraries the academic libraries you know the school college and university libraries come under the category of academic libraries and under the category of special libraries there are public sector undertaking private sector organizations and in case of public libraries there are state central library district library block libraries and panchayat and village libraries working under the block libraries now we will discuss on the governance in academic libraries the academic libraries include school college and university libraries in case of school libraries there is no organized system for library policy in fact the principal directly looks after the library affairs and the senior teacher may be authorized for this the librarian of the school acts under the direction of the principal and the senior teacher authorized for the purpose in case of college and university library the governance is done by the library committee or the board of management the composition of the library committee includes members from the representatives of the library users now who are the users of library in college and university libraries they are the students faculty members and non teaching staffs apart from the library users the library committee also includes rector and the dean of students the dean of students is appointed in university to look after the welfare of the students apart from them 
The representative from administrative section and the finance sections are also included in the library committee to maintain the proper financial and administrative procedures in library affairs. The library committee is chaired by the pro vice chancellor in an university who is selected by the vice chancellor and the principal acts as the chairman of the library committee in college libraries. We will discuss about the governance in special libraries. The special libraries are governed by the board of managing director or board of management or the board of trustee. In case of public sector undertaking, the managing director nominates the chairman of the governing body. It also frames rules and policy for better library services in the subject field of that organization. Like if we say NTPC or Engineers India or Rural Electricity Authority, in these cases, the library is governed by the board of management of that institution. The librarian is accountable here for better library services and in case of private sector organizations or any industries, the library is governed by the board of trustees. The chairman of the governing body is selected by the owner of the private firm. For example, if we say Chinmaya Foundation, Billa Foundations, in that case it is only a private affair. It may have uniform flow of finance and it may adopt the policy for library service for its member. It may not have the regular budget for the library which can be utilized annually. It depends upon the financial condition of the organization and the profit made by the organization in an year. Governance in public library. The public library governance is conducted by the library board. The library board is only a policy making body and an advisory authority. It is not expected to interfere in day to day administration of the library. The public library provides reading material to citizen of a region where it is located. Therefore, it is required to include representatives from the different groups of community in the library board. Now, who are the members of the library board in a public library system? It includes members representing municipal corporation of the local bodies, members from the legislative assembly of that area, representatives from the fund, fund providing organization that can be central or state government authority. It includes expert members in the field of library and information science. And the chairman of the board is nominated by the head of the center or state government ministry under which the library affairs are allocated. The bylaws of the boards provide clear framework for the library board and its responsibility and its code of conduct in the transaction of its duty in making policies. Now we will discuss about the rules and regulations of the governing body. The member of governing body in a library are appointed as per the rules set out by the statute and act of the library. The number of members and their tenure are well defined. The minimum number of member required to fulfill the quorum to conduct general body meeting of the governing body is well defined. It is also defined the number of members required to take an important policy making decision by the governing body meeting. The powers of the governing body members that is their financial, executive and administrative powers are well defined in the rules of the library. The limitations of their power which is not to interfere in the day to day administration or transfer of staff in the library are well men mentioned in the governing body in order to avoid any controversy in the library system. It also defines the voting power of each member and their different, when there is any difference of opinion 
for any decision, the voting power for members are very important. It provides details of code of conduct of the governing body. Code of conduct means if any governing body members misses the general body meeting for more than three times, his membership can also be cancelled. The duty of the members is to act honestly and in good faith and sincerely for the interest of the library. Duties of governing bodies the governing body holds the responsibility in building a strong institution. The board must ensure that the organization operates legally and within the framework of rules. It should follow sound and transparent financial practice. It is the responsibility of the government body to see that the organization operates accountably, ethically, and works to achieve its aims and objectives. The library services are bound to be efficient and successful when the board is clear in its role and holds the chief executive of the library, that is the librarian, and its senior staffs responsible for the delivery of better library services. Good governance in library requires to develop good relations and coordination between library staff and the library users. Here we will discuss the structure of public library system in India. The Government of India appointed Dr. A. P. Sinha Committee in 1959 on the status of public library development in the country, which made landmark recommendations and given the following pattern of hierarchy for the public library system in the country. The apex body of the public library system is defined as the National Library and the State Central Library comes after the National Library and under the State Central Library there is District Library, then Block Libraries and the Block Library has many village libraries or the panchayat libraries acting in the rural areas. Here we will discuss about the recommendations made by the AP Sena committee. The AP Com Sena committee mentioned that the library service should be made free for every citizen of India. Every state should set up an independent directorate of social education and libraries. It should appoint a full-time senior officer of the level of class 1, which is equivalent to the rank of the deputy director of education in a state, to organize and administer, administer the state library system. The central government and the state government should bear the responsibility of establishing the public libraries in the state. An All India Advisory Council should be constituted to develop and maintain standard of public library system across the country. A library cess should be levied. What is library cess or the tax? The Sina committee recommended that 6 paisa per rupee of the property tax earned by the state government should be levied for the development of of public library in a state. Now we will talk about the National Library of India. As per the Sina committee, as I have said earlier, that National Library is the apex body of the public library system in our country. The National Library started as a Calcutta Public Library in 1836 and the Imperial Library was founded in 1891. Lord Curzon merged the collection of Calcutta Public Library with the collection of the Imperial Library and a new library was opened and it was opened for the general public on 30th of January 1903 at the Metcalf Hall in Calcutta. After independence, the Imperial Library was renamed as the National Library. With the enactment of the Imperial Library Act of 1948, and the collection was shifted to Belvedere Estate in Calcutta. It has been further elevated as an institute of the national importance under the 
Act Article of 62 of 7th Schedule of the Union List of Constitution of India. And the National Library was shifted to Bhasha Bhavan New Building in 2004 at the Belvedere Estate in Calcutta. We will discuss the governance in public National Library. The Director General is the head of the National Library Governance. He is supported by two principal library and information officers. The library is fully funded under the administrative control of the Ministry of Culture, Government of India. The transaction of policy matters of different sections of National Library are done through the appointment of various committees, which include members from Ministry of Culture, library experts, renowned scholars in the country, local government authorities, and representatives of different sections of the library users. The National Library has mammoth collection of reading materials, which includes 2.5 million books, more than 7,000 journals in print and electronic format, reports, gazetteers. It has a treasure of very rare collection of manuscripts, books and maps. It has perhaps the widest range of language document collection, which include 17 Indian language books, foreign language books including East Asian and West Asian languages, Germanic, Roman, Slavonic and African language documents. The state central libraries and other subordinate bodies. What is the governing bodies in these subordinate libraries? According to the Sina committee report, every state should have state central library as the apex body in the state. They are expected to establish statewide linkage with all district, divisional, block, panchayat and village libraries forming a strong base of state public library system. The development of state public library system is the responsibility of the state and they are supposed to get financial support from the state and other programs of the central government. Library legislation has its importance in the public library system in the country. The library legislation provides plan for government for the development of public library system in the country. It grants the power from the legislature to local government such as state, district, division, city and village to develop their public library system in a planned manner. It ensures the flow of government fund, support for infrastructure, and guidelines for the development of standard for public library services within the territorial jurisdiction of the library. It enumerates power, responsibility and duties of the authorities to function the public library system smoothly. Only 19 states in, and union territories of India have enacted the library legislation in the country and rest of the state are providing library services without any standard and guidelines and they are in a very poor condition. Now we will see what is the scenario of public library system in states. In India there are 29 states and 7 union territories and all of them have their own public library system. Only 19 states and union territories have enacted the library legislation and rest of the states are providing public library service without any library legislation. The state governments are providing financial assistance and most of them are following the hierarchical system of public libraries stated by the Sena committee. But their governance including operating system, standard, and financial resources are not the same as there is lack of uniform library legislation across the country. Dr. T. Malaseppa made detailed evaluation of impact of library legislation 
on public library services and he found that the public library system in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh are in most advanced position. In the absence of effective library legislation in many other states, the condition of public library services are very poor. According to D.B. Ashwarya Reddy, over 90% rural population of India are not having the access of reading material and reading room to them. Therefore, a nationwide campaign is required to improve the condition of public libraries in the country and to have uniform legislation is required to ensure sustainable financial and administrative support for the development of public libraries in the country. Here we will discuss about the role of IFLA, International Federation for Library Association and their guidelines for legal and financial framework of public library governance. According to IFLA guidelines, the public libraries are locally based services. Local government is the most appropriate authority for providing support for the public libraries. It is supported by fund of the local government. Local authority is responsible for employees, salary and funding of library materials to be shared between various level of governments and other fund providing organizations. Eventual aim should be to bring public library service under the formal government structure, under the national legislation and with appropriate level of funding. IFLA recommended for establishing relation between public libraries and government for law that governs the activities and funding arrangements. The local government should take up responsibility to develop standard law act to govern their activities and develop standard structure for public library system in the state. It should be based upon legislation which assure continuance and their place in government structure. Public library legislation includes standard collection, stable fund, resources and defined services for the public. Example of model public library legislation has been given by IFLA in its website www.ifla.org slash v slash cdoc slash acts dot htm. The role of NAPLIS in public library governance. In 1985, a committee to formulate national policy on library and information system, that is NAPLIS, under the chairmanship of Professor D.P. Chattopadhyay was set up by the government. It made some valuable recommendations such as the public library maintenance and development fund should come from state. The Raja Ram Mohan Rai Library Foundation should act as the national agency for the development of public libraries in states. The national standards and guidelines for library services should be created. National Commission on Libraries and Information System and National Commission for Informatics and Documentation may be constituted by the government by an Act of Parliament for the implementation of NAPLIS recommendations. The NAPLIS also recommended for the constitution of four national depository libraries to conduct the job of preservation of literature published in India under the Delivery of Book Acts of 1954. Indian National Bibliography should be compiled and updated regularly by the National Library. The link should be established between rural community centers, central libraries and nearby schools where there is no library facility available. The public library system should provide services to disabled, low-income groups, children and women through the mobile library services in the remote areas. Special effort should be made 
for the braille literature production, preservation and the dissemination to the blind population. Now we will discuss about the contribution made by the Raja Ramon Rai Library Foundation in the public library governance. The Raja Ramon Rai Library Foundation at Calcutta was established on 22nd May 1972 to develop public libraries, public libraries, especially in rural areas. It provides financial assistance in the form of grant, reading resources to the country, and it has its own objectives, which are to promote library movement in India, to adopt and follow national library policy by central and state government, to propagate and adapt library legislation in the country, to develop national library system through the integration of service of national library, all state library, central library, district, block and village libraries, financial assistance to voluntary organization, associations and NGOs for the promotion of library activities. It brings out a periodic publication of a report on library development. It also advises Government of India on library and its profession. It aims to promote collection development in public libraries. It develops modern infrastructure and facilities to transform library services from print mode to electronic mode. It provides assistance to develop children's library in rural areas and mobile library services to remote areas. We will see what are the achievements made by Raja Ramon Life Foundation till date. It has provided assistance to 28 state central libraries, 451 district and divisional libraries, 501 subdivisional libraries, and 31,155 rural libraries, 594 Nehru Yuva Kendra, 49 Jawahar Bal Bhavan, and 128 other organizations which include associations, NGOs, or any other private bodies who are working for the welfare and development of libraries in India. We will discuss the governance in Delhi Public Library because it is the largest public library system. The Delhi Public Library started as the pilot project of UNESCO for the development of public library services throughout India and in other countries of Southeast Asia. UNESCO floated a proposal to start public library pilot project in Asia and India was the first to respond and express the desire to implement it. Therefore, India was selected for public library pilot project to carry out the policy of UNESCO's public library manifesto. It started as a model of UNESCO public library manifesto in Asia and an agreement between UNESCO and Government of in India was made in May 1951. Mr. D. R. Kalia was selected as the first director of Delhi Public Library and he was sent abroad on fellowship in spring 1950. In between, Mr. Edward Sidney took up the charge of Delhi Public Library and worked from December 1950 to June 1951. Mr. Frank M. Gardner, the librarian of Luton Public Library, UK, joined as consultant of the Delhi Public Library project in November 1951 and served Delhi Public Library up to June 1952. He authored the text of Delhi Public Library project. This is the master document which provides details related to establishment and history of Delhi Public Library. Composition of governing body of Delhi Public Library System. We will talk about the Delhi Public Library System because it is the largest public library system in the country. The chairman of the governing body of Delhi Public Library System is selected by the ministry or the department under which it is working. That is the Ministry of Culture.
the vice chairman is nominated amongst the board of members of the governing body. Two representative of government, at least one from the concerned ministry is appointed as the member of governing body. One member is nominated from UNESCO. One member is nominated by the Speaker of Delhi Legislative Assembly. Two members are nominated by the Mayor of Municipal Corporation of Delhi. And one member is nominated by the President of New Delhi Municipal Committee. And two representatives are nominated by the Government of Delhi. And at least one of them must represent the Directorate of Education. And not more than four members are nominated as the subject experts whose qualification and experience are likely to be useful for the board for taking decision in the policy matters of the library system. And the Director General of the Delhi Public Library acts as the ex officio member secretary for the governing body. Here we will discuss the special services provided by the public libraries in India. Some of the states are providing specialized public library service to disabled population, children and women. Bihar, Jharkhand, Delhi, Gujarat and Haryana are providing very advanced braille literature for blind population of their states. Delhi, Gujarat, Jammu Kashmir, Karnataka, Maharashtra are providing children library service to children and nearby schools which are working without the facility of library services. In case of Andhra, Delhi, Goa, Himachal Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Tripura, the public library services are reaching to remote areas through the service of mobile library services. We will discuss the delivery of Books Act. Four public libraries are designated by the Government of India as the recipient of one copy of books published in India in any language under the Delivery of Book and Newspapers Act in 1954. These libraries are expected to preserve one copy of book published in India for the reference of future generation. In a way you can say it has the responsibility of providing safe preservation and custody of knowledge created in the library, created in India, so that anybody who wants to know about the books published in India should get at least one copy from these libraries. The National Library of Kolkata streamlines the activity of these four libraries and it acts as the apex body among them. The other three libraries are Delhi Public Library Delhi, Kanamara Public Library Chennai and Asiatic Society Library Mumbai. These books are processed, preserved and the National Library brings out the Indian National Bibli Bibliography regularly by indexing these publications which are published from India. If we summarize the subject, we may conclude that the public library must be accountable to their governing body and local citizen to whom it is perform giving the service. They must maintain coordination to achieve highest professional standard and carry out their duties in advising the governing body. Although the final decision of the policy should be taken by the governing body and the librarian, even then they should involve the local citizen who are actually the potential user of the library. The good governance of public library aims to achieve efficient and the quality service for the library. It is important to involve professional experts and members of the library authority to take expert decision for the development and modernization of the library. The primary purpose of the public library is to provide resources and services to satisfy the need of the individual and groups for education, their information, 
and the personal development including recreation and leisure activities. It has important role in the democratic society to educate the citizen and provide wide range of knowledge, creative ideas and to include right op in inculcate right opinion for the development of a nation. With these words, I conclude. Thank you.